In a 2022 trade that has potential to go down as one of the biggest win-win scenarios ever, the Indiana Pacers found their star guard of the future in Tyrese Halliburton. Halley's put the league on notice with his averages of 20 and 10 while shooting 40% from three, keeping his team in the playoff hunt as he earned a spot on the all-star team in just season number three. But just how good is his offensive game right now, and where can he get even better? Halliburton has quickly developed into one of the NBA's best passers. Standing at 6'5", his size gives him access to reads and angles over the top of defenses that smaller guards tend to struggle with, which helps him make really long-range deliveries. His court vision is incredible, scanning quite literally every inch of the floor and taking advantage of any slight mishap by off-ball defenders, where he can softly float the ball perfectly into the hands of shooters, or when needed, put a little more spice on it to capitalize on smaller windows of opportunity. When attacking in traffic, he'll often leave his feet for high-velocity jump passes that again give him that angle over the top of defenders where there's much less of a threat for steals. As a result of his ability to get the ball to shooters wherever they get free, he comfortably leads the league in assists that result in three-pointers, recording almost six and a half every 100 possessions. Despite going to a wide array of deliveries, one thing remains constant, and that's the accuracy of these passes. Rarely ever will you see shooters having to reposition themselves before loading into these jumpers, receiving the ball right in the pocket. And this also holds true with rollers and cutters, catching the ball perfectly in stride where they can finish with momentum. It's not like he's telegraphing these passes either. His release speed is lightning quick, which is one of those traits that at the top level can help separate the best of the best from just great. This masks the delivery until the very last second and makes rotations or closeouts just a touch later, allowing him to capitalize on openings as fast as possible regardless of situation or where he may be on the floor with a live dribble. For a third year player, he's already so advanced at manipulating the defense to improve the quality of these dimes. He's amazing at using his eyes as a way to look off defenders, staring down the corner as he attacks baseline to send this defender on a closeout, leaving nobody to tag a cutter as he walks into a pre-game layup. He also loves throwing in fakes to move defenders around and open up more efficient looks. Catching two different Celtics off guard here as he pauses and stares down the top of the key to move Brown out of the paint before loading up for an apparent kickout to freeze Horford and open up a slip to the cup. Once the opportunities are there, he just has so many different deliveries in his arsenal. He loves this one-handed hook pass over his head to get the ball to either shooters or his roll man, and even has a strong enough offhand to go to these when moving to his left. There's a legit 360 degree radius on these passes as well. Driving into the paint and recognizing that Turner is relocating above the break and throwing it backwards over his head right on target for a wide open look from three. There's also the tight shovel bounce pass that has become a staple for just about every pick and roll ball handler, most commonly using just one hand to sling these in between gaps, but also going to the classic two handed bounce like a true old school facilitator. Indiana isn't a team that surrounds him with rim running lob threats, but he's good at those too, patiently feathering them in where only his receiver can catch and finish. A lot of his time on the floor is spent with a shooting big, and he's very good at finding screeners at the top of the key in the pick and pop with little dump off passes or by utilizing his pivot to move into an easier delivery angle, which he'll also go to as a way of finding more teammates down low or on cuts. And his ability to get the ball to shooters above the break has made ghost screen actions with sharpshooter Buddy Heald a staple of their offense. When players are positioned near the basket, he's really good at laying it down on the move, getting the step on Allen, which draws help from Levert, and leaving his feet as if looking to finish, only to contort his body and find a ridiculous angle that results in a free dunk. In these spots, he primarily goes to this mid-air, one-handed dump off to the middle of the floor, but he can also stay low to the ground and use his strides as a way of freeing up bigs in the dunker spot. 
The overall product is an incredibly dynamic passer who just doesn't turn the ball over at all, and his ability to make plays at such great volume is enhanced by how he puts pressure on defenses as a creator. He's looking to push the pace whenever he possibly can, whether that's off of a forced turnover, defensive rebound, or even after a made basket before the defense has fully recovered. He does a great job of making himself an available target, and his teammates get the ball to him for the push, where he's just an outstanding standing decision maker in the open floor. His team runs with him as he surveys the floor and hunts out the best shot possible, and because of his vast arsenal as a passer, he doesn't really miss opportunities to hit cutters in stride or shooters perfectly on the move for high quality jumpers. And because he's primarily looking to pass, he'll often utilize that threat as a way to call on his own number, staring down healed in the corner as he fakes a bounce pass to move Morris out of his path on the way to a dunk. It's not just the paint he's looking to get to as he runs, but also his pull-up three-pointer. Off the dribble three-point shooting is his best trait as a scorer, this season making 40% of these threes on five and a half attempts a game. He's got an unorthodox shooting motion that I do think hurts his ability to get great looks against more aggressive ball pressure or up over great contests, but there's still a decent amount of versatility in how he gets into these triples. He gets the ball off the floor quickly, allowing him to pull the trigger with speed going downhill or right off of screens in small windows, and he's comfortable shooting with shifts and momentum, creating more separation for himself with the use of side steps, out of hesitation dribbles, or his go-to, the step back. Space creation becomes a lot easier when you have the range of Halliburton, knocking these down without much difficulty from well beyond the arc, and being such a good shooter helps open up his driving game, which as of right now I would say is decent. He's not a super explosive athlete and doesn't have the quick twitch movements of a shiftier guard, so he attacks with pace, using hesitations and crossovers where he can get that first step by the hip of his man and into open space. He's really good at using lengthy, calculated strides to squeeze his way into the paint, even tossing in some pass fakes to buy himself a bit more room. Now, I do think he can struggle getting all the way to the rim at times. You'll often see him pick up his dribble a bit too early which can result in awkward finishes, especially when help meets him near the nail. Looking to break down Grimes in isolation, he actually gets that first step by the hip, which opens up a lane had he taken an extra dribble or two, but Brunson being so close makes him pick it up for more security, leading to an impossible layup attempt. This time as he isolates, Tucker stays relatively close to Turner on the three-point line instead of gapping, meaning that when he gets to the nail, he's comfortable taking that extra dribble to get all the way to that restricted area. Sometimes he can get away with picking up his dribble due to that length and how he uses strides, but I do think this is something that could hurt him against playoff defenses and is a clear area for improvement. When he does make it to the rim, he has real solid touch as a finisher. He almost exclusively goes to finger rolls and scoops off the glass, which can make it a bit easier for shot blockers to alter, but he's pretty good at sneaking these into little crevices and can fall back on a nice floater when he's not able to get to those. He tends to avoid contact when driving like this, which leads to less trips to the line, but when he does get that contact, he's pretty good at finishing through it. This overall skill set makes him a really effective ball handler in the pick and roll. But before we get into that, I want to give a quick shout out to Basketball Index for helping with this analysis and the making of this video. If you're not familiar with the site, they provide tons of statistical measurements, tools, and easily accessible graphics to further guide your understanding of the sport. I earlier mentioned a few of their talent grades, and through the Player Profiles tab, I can easily compare them to other players around the league. Using Halliburton's play making as an example, on this page I'm presented with various metrics detailing his ability to create for others, along with how he stacks up against his peers. This is just one of the many useful tools found on the site to help guide me and many others through their analysis, and by signing up with the code VENUE30, you can get 30% off your first month subscription. I'll leave a link in the description below for anyone interested in signing up, and with that being said, let's take a look at Halley's game in the pick and roll. 
off of ball screens, he's looking to get to those pull-up threes. If he's not met with resistance, he'll just bounce right into them, but he can also hunt them out by snaking the screen and stepping back outside. And what this pull-up shooting threat does is bring bigs to the level, creating a slight advantage for him to maximize. As he gets into these actions, he's mapping the floor and picking apart any off-ball rotations, to which he seemingly makes the right read every time. On this one, Smith is going to slip the screen, and with nobody in position to tag, it's a quick release one-hander in stride to the unattended paint. This time, that initial roll doesn't result in an automatic runway to the basket, so Halliburton takes one extra dribble, which forces Plumlee to remain in front of the ball, before whipping it laterally to Turner for the and one. Here's the same sort of thing, except this time Ben Simmons rotates from the weak side to take away that pass to the roller, so Halley goes to a mid-air skip that results in a corner three. Because he's such a good decision maker with the ball, Indiana runs almost all of their offense through him. His 94 and a half touches a game are second in the NBA, and most of these come as an initiator, where he runs a very ball dominant style. And the Pacers certainly reap the benefits as their offense is up to 119.1 points per 100 with him on the floor from a measly 109.8 in minutes without him. Despite this, I'm not necessarily sure that this is where he's maximized. Due to his elite outside shooting, he's a threat to finish plays. Over the last three seasons, he's hit 44% of his wide open threes, offering a fair amount of spacing. He's also an amazing connector. He's shown to be a willing and smart mover without the ball, with outstanding extra passing, and when it's not there right away, he'll slash off the catch and hunt out other options. As a result, I think he'd play extremely well off of many of the league's high volume scorers, as a sort of secondary threat who can initiate and set up teammates with the best of them. I do think that next step for him is as a driver in the half court, getting more comfortable taking those extra dribbles to get deeper in the paint, which won't only help him as a scorer, but an interior passer. And with age, I expect him to get a bit smarter in the art of initiating or drawing contact to earn trips to the line where he's already an incredible shooter. Right now, I view him as an all-star level offensive player with a clear pathway to taking that next step into all NBA territory, and is already one of the very best playmakers in the world. If you enjoyed this breakdown, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn my post notifications on to be first on more content. If you're interested in my more in-depth research, make sure to check out my website and social media profiles. You can find those links in the description. Feel free to let me know down in the comments what you think of Halliburton and just how good you believe he is. As always, I hope you all have a great day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.